Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 363 bringing you my second tournament match for last week. This time it's against Google Frog, who is blue in the north. And I am the red player in the south, also playing Greckham, so both of us are playing Greckham. And as I mentioned last game, I'm going to be going for that really aggressive economy build that Sickles pioneered and showed me. So, Google Frog at the same time is going to be. Also going for, well, he's going for the same similar start. This is the start for every Grecum player, really, is get a Faro, start building some Octos. He's also building a lot of resource processors. And so at this point, I mean, obviously I'm playing just from my point of view, so I'm building an eighth resource processor, while Google Frog, on the other hand, is only building seven on Liquid Crystal, and he's building another Octo, and getting a Sepi out to get a Reef. So he's actually getting a much earlier tech than I am. While I have built so far... And I'm actually about 10 seconds down from him, but I built so far mostly just liquid crystal resource processors, and I'm going to be building up a bunch of octos to go for a huge rush. While Google Frog, on the other hand, is building up a couple octos, but most of the octos he's building are still resource processors. This time on Q Plasma, but he hasn't been building a lot of other things. He has advanced structures coming in. He's not been very aggressive at all. He has a lot of, and this is slightly ahead of me too. So for me, I nearly have my Octos ready for an attack. I have another Octo back here for defense, because Google Frog, one of his most favorite things to do is send in attacks once the unplayable past comes in, and then send in an attack such that it hits you after the unplayable past has passed through the location. So it's really important to set up defenses near res near any resources, even just one unit, because Grecum Hierarchies, if something is connected to an Arcticus and it gets hit, everything else will start to go for it if it's idle. So since I'm attacking, I'm also sending off some more Octos to build more RPs on QP. And Google Frog, who is about 10 seconds ahead of me, is going to be continuing to build up resource processors, building up a lot of them along everywhere. So he's got a second, he has his main all saturated, his natural starting it filled up, this is northeast expansion, but my Octos coming in, so I have two Octos coming in, who see his Expansion, three more Octos coming in. This is actually a couple seconds behind, but now I see it. So two Octos coming in to take care of his Octo going for the resource processor, and three Octos coming into his main base to harass everything. And I've got advanced structures actually considerably later than he did, because I was focusing on the rush, while at the same time also getting a bunch of Octopods and Frost for defense. So his Octo is coming in, while my three Octos are also coming in, taking, taking care of this one Octo who's trying to build the resource processor. It's built the resource processor, but it hasn't lasted much longer, so that RP has dead. The other RPs are getting harassed very well. The Octo from him is coming in. Also, a Sepi, but none of that's going to be doing much for him. And he's actually gone further in the past to try to see what he can do. Back when he is, is about two minutes behind what we were just looking at, or a minute and a half rather. He has a dome up, and he has another reef coming up to heal up the side, so he can much more effectively defend this side. He's actually getting a third dome, or a second dome rather. So he's got two domes and a reef next to his domes to heal them up and to heal any units that are going to be fighting. And this is where my attack hits. So now we have the Octos coming in, and they're not going to be able to do as much damage because the domes are coming in. You just jump back a bit, about 15 seconds. And from my point of view, I still see my dome. My Octos is doing a lot of damage. I'm more focused really on getting my economy up and building a chrono porting, which I have as well, halfway to get. And what I want to do, of course, is start chrono porting back units like this Farapod. But I haven't gotten to that point yet because it takes a little while to research. However, I still, I jumped back just to double check because I noticed that my attack isn't quite as effective. I have damage I haven't seen, and yeah, it turns out, okay, there's domes here. My Octos have taken care of one of the domes, as you can see, about 15 seconds back from there. The Octos took care of one of the domes, but they aren't going to be able to take care of the other one very effectively before they all get killed. Domes are not especially effective against ground units before they get upgraded, but they haven't been upgraded, so they're not super effective, but they managed to be effective enough. However... The whole point of that attack was simply to cover myself while getting chrono boarding and getting some of their defenses up. So at this point, I actually am quite comfortable, even though I don't have an effective rush in his base. I mean, obviously, I, it looks like I do, but this red time wave, once it comes, it'll show that I really don't have anything. However, I'm just jumping back to make sure, to double check what I have, and make doubly sure that I can actually get through this, I'm not getting attacked. Google Frog isn't trying to send something at me to stop me, and it actually looks like. He's He is, actually. He is sending some Octos down here to hit, attack my natural, and I have a bunch of Octos, Seppies, Faros, not really Faros, but here I am, 15 seconds ahead, sending off my units to defend, but I will be going back to send them. 
So I have my defenses coming up from his point of view, quite effectively getting rid of his Octos and Seppies, and Seppies are not going to last long at all. I mean, the pure anti-air units. However... Oh, okay, he is jumping back slightly just to double-check to review his, his side of the battle. While from my end, which is about a minute and a half, or a minute up from there, I have actually sent back a Faro pod. Here we are. So they sent the Faro pod a few minutes, but I'm waiting for the time wave to pick it up so that it doesn't give away that I actually sent it back. Not too soon, anyway. Well, his his forces are coming in. This is the forces that I sent to defend, and time wave has carried it over. So his Seppies are dealing a lot of damage, or getting dealt a lot of damage today, not dealing much damage at all. From his point of view, he actually doesn't have his Seppies up here attacking yet. He's, like I said, about 10 seconds down from me, but this isn't going to be a big deal. As we've seen, this already doesn't go well for him in the first place. So, unless he can get some forces in here, and he actually chronoports back to Seppi, Seppi, so he's trying to get around it by chronoporting to harass my expansion a bit earlier, but I don't know how much that's going to do. I mean, at that point, I still have a fair, fairly large defense. I just need to send them. And it's still in the playable pass, so it's not like I'm going to be stopped by this. So, as far as my forces are concerned, I have a Ferropod comfortably chronoported to the past, and I'm actually now stuck in the right side of the timeline, because I have stuff chronoported as well. I have another Octopod chronoported, so that basically I can defend those Seppies, because the Seppies are rather annoying, but they're not a huge threat. They just will be taking down some of the resource processors and kind of harassing them, stopping them from getting anything. At the same time, I have a Faropod coming in here, dealing a fair amount of damage, but he's probably going to send some stuff to defend, build some, or get the domes from over here, up, back here. I mean, still both of them still exist. They weren't killed, either of them. But he does have... He doesn't have a lot of time, a lot of energy to actually do this. From his point of view, he doesn't have... He has the domes being sent forward, because, of course, he knows there is a Faropod coming, though the Faropod attack has been reduced slightly. So I'm just trying to figure out from the future how to really attack, because, like I said, I have a lot of resources, I'm focusing more on the future right now, and sending back units, of course, is important, but as we can see, I do have some units sent back, and trying to get rid of some of the domes, but the domes, of course, have actually been moved, so from my point of view, once again, my attack is a lot more advantageous than I actually think it is. Google Frog, about two minutes down from me, has moved his domes in here, so Google Frog has actually moved his domes here, and he also has a huge, well, a small attacking force coming in here, a large attacking force coming in from behind, and is built a lot, but the thing is, he's used a lot of money on building units and not a lot on chronoporting. He just has chronoporting now, which is actually around the same time that I get chronoporting, but his focus has been more on building units. I have a ton of units already, while he has to rebuild a bunch of his units at this point, so it's going to be a lot harder for him to get around this. But he has sent back some units now, the, far the Seppies. He's still going to be sending back other units, I'm sure, because he is Google Frog, and Google Frog loves chronoporting. He does that all the time. I was actually kind of worried when I started playing this game because I wasn't sure how to beat chronoporting, but then once I played Sickles, I realized that it's actually quite effective with a good solid rush build with good economy. And it turns out I actually get chronoporting before he does more effectively. See, all these yellow lines, the ones closer to the future are when I depart from a chronoporting, and the ones closer to the past are the arrivals. So Google Frog sees already a bunch of arrivals. I mean, he has some far pods of his own, I mean, they're probably going to be chronoporting. Which are getting hit a bit by my forces, but my forces are walking back to base to try to defend directly rather than trying to stop in the middle. So some of the octopods have started to attack the pods, but the pods are going to be able to get around here and not do too much. So the pods are coming back around here and are very likely to be chronoporting. I'm not sure when they're going to be chronoporting or if they're going to be chronoporting. Here we are. So now they chronoport back. So now there's three pods in my base about a minute down from when I'm looking and all the unplayable paths. And this is exactly what I was talking about, how he's very fond of doing this. However, from my point of view, I'm right at the playable pass. I do have some domes up, and I would have built them earlier. So, I do have domes. I will be able to take care of this, but it will be disrupting me in the past, and will disrupt my chronoports, which are an important part of my strategy, and have been doing a lot for me at this point. So, Google Frog, about three minutes down. He's fighting off my Farapods, another chronoport Farapod as well. So, he has all these Farapods coming in. The dome is trying to take care of this Farapod, but it's not really close enough to deal with it. Now, it should be close enough to deal with it. Farpods are destroying his Farpods, so his Farpods have been disrupted. They're not going to be able to actually do too much because they're basically Paradox now. They should exist, but don't. And the Farpod is getting attacked by the Dome, but the Dome is getting attacked harder and is taking more damage, so it won't be able to completely finish it off. That Dome was damaged to begin with. So Google Frog has been disrupted heavily in his attacks. His 
Faropod has not been able to deal a whole lot of damage, and from my point of view, I see my Faropod jumping back, and I don't really see any of the attacks coming in that he had before. So I have destroyed the Faropods that did attack me, and I also have some Octopus Chronoport back here as well to try to make sure that I can take care of the, the force he sends earlier on, because he's trying to harass me, trying to harass my expansion, as, as you can see here, he's harassing my expansion, got Seppi, some Octos coming in, and he, and from his point of view, actually, for, for the behind, well, actually now slightly ahead, he jumped ahead right as I came in, so now this is where he was. More worried about defending this far apart than anything else, he doesn't have a lot of forces coming in to attack anymore anyway. So I've managed to disrupt a lot of his forces by simply chronoporting back and forcing him to defend. And the forces he did send are being torn to shreds by my Octos and Seppies, and he's jumping back to double double check what he has, see if he can do anything about it with some chronoports. But as it stands, he doesn't have a whole lot to attack with, and he's trying to defend against his Faropods that are coming back from me. And as you can see here, I do have a lot of chronoports that have sent in to disrupt a lot of his forces, which have been successful, as we've seen. So at this point, I'm just trying to build up a huge army, trying to get what I can. And actually get low legal class as well, so that I can start building up some high-tech units just in case, because I don't know if he's building up tech or anything, I don't know what he has, because he is known, Goofy is known for being really tricky, and here's the Faropods that he had sent before. So here are the Faropods, they actually managed to build up, or get another pair of Faropods at least. And he doesn't actually have as much resources as I think he does, but, you know, you can never be too safe. With this guy, he's very good at manipulating time, he's very good at being very tricky, so I've got to make sure to be at least as tricky as him, or at the very least to be aware of his trickiness, because that will be my downfall if I'm not careful. So he's jumping back, just double check, he does have some chronoporting going on. Looks like that's... Ah, here. He has his Faropod chronoport back, but seems to be stuck in a tree. Oh, that sucks. However, I do have a lot of defense forces just in case he does have a Faropod, so it's not huge, but that's still unfortunate. He also has a Faropod in the middle of the map. Looks like he's trying to progenerate out. He doesn't have a legal class yet, but he might be trying to progenerate some pod class units in the middle of the map. However, I have spotted this, and from my point of view, I actually think that he's got a lot more than he really does. And I'm kind of getting worried, because I see that he's got the Faropod in the middle of the map. I don't know, does he have a Seppi Pod? Does he have anything else? So I have to send some units in the middle just to double check. And I'm also just double checking around, making sure he doesn't have anything in the center of the map, because I don't know where he is entirely. I've got to scout out, make sure I know where he is, because if I don't know where he is, then he can just hit me from anywhere. From Google Frog's point of view, about 15 seconds down from, or 30 seconds down from my position, he has a lot of Seppi Pods hanging out in his base, just preparing for a Faropod attack. And at the same time, he does have some Faropods coming down here, but they are getting hit heavily by the domes. The domes are not going to allow him to do any damage, and that's that was pretty much a delayed attack attempt on his part. But it didn't do any damage, and he's actually been taking a lot of damage. Look at the line, you see, he's a lot. the red bars are a lot taller, that's from me. So I've dealt him a fair bit more damage than he's dealt me, but I actually haven't dealt a lot of damage yet. I've been trying to just build up, and like I said, I found this here. So I'm a bit suspicious about it. I'm not sure exactly if he's planning on building legal class units in the middle of the map, because I'm planning on building legal class, class units at some point, but has not come up yet. So for here, I'm actually starting to run out of resources. I'm getting my, I need to get more Q-Plasma RPs, or these Q-Plasma RPs somewhere else, but I do have a lot of RPs around the map. Just a bit in my Southwest expansion, a bit to the middle, mostly in my natural with Q-Plasma, just to make sure I have enough to safely chronoport. While Google on hand has about seven RPs in his main for Liquid Crystal. He still has Liquid Crystal pretty pretty safe, but it's starting to run out. His Q-Plasma is almost run out. He has his expansion slightly taken, but not a whole lot there yet. And he's trying to build up some more units. He's getting kind of low in Chrono Energy, but he's trying to build up some units. Getting a bunch of reefs here, because this, well, this is a huge, this is four reefs. I mean, this is insane. He's really concerned, or six reefs, actually, total. Four reefs on one side, really concerned about healing, making sure he has complete certainty that he's going to be able to heal up against anything that attacks, but I really don't know how much that good that's going to do, because... He also seeing a harassment force up, but really, that's a lot of reefs that... That's a lot of money that could have been spent on, well, just seppies, really, for defense. But that's the way he's planning on doing it. So that will be a problem for me to get around. At the same time, I'm actually building up some... Or, I should say, 15 minutes... 15 seconds up, I'm building up some more units as well. Actually got a second try down here, getting some more Octos and Octopods. Trying to build up, while also getting some units to send back into the past again. And getting some units to build Legal Class units, because I have Legal Class, and I might as well. So, Google Frog actually sees that there's some damage going on. I do have, like I said, I did find forces in the middle, sent units to fight them, and he also has harassment force coming in, but my dome is taking care of that harassment force decently, but it probably won't, it will not hold off very long, so the far pod is going to be able to just start making short work of this. However, it is further into the future, and it looks like, oh, he actually has chronoport back all these units, so this is going to be a bit harder to deal with. 
Except for the fact that this is when I had defenses up. Unfortunately for him, I had a bunch of Seppies and Octos. The Octos are useless, but the Seppies are going to be able to make sure work of everything here. And so the Dome will be able to take care of these very quickly. And a Faropod is also coming in just to defense. Even the Faropod is coming in to help out. So for Google Froggy, he really hasn't been successful with this Chrono Court. I don't know if he's going to undo it or not. Because my defenses were pretty strong at that point in time. And it looks like he has... It's hard to tell. He hasn't quite gone to it yet. This is the Chronoport, this bar right here. And no, it looks like he is continu No, he has continued to send the Chronoport, so it really won't do much good. My defenses are still pretty strong. My dome was cancelled, apparently, but my defenses are still strong enough to last against it, so... Really, it hasn't been that effective on an attack. And... My attack at the same time, going through here... Google Frog is actually a few minutes down from me, I'm curious. He looks like he is continuing to watch, make sure that his attack is actually doing anything, but no. There's more Sephibots coming in from the northeast, or northwest rather, from his main base, but it's not going to be doing too much. He does get rid of the Faropod, but everything else is ground units, and Sephipods are good against air units, not ground units. So the Sephis will be able to make sure it works, and the Octopods will be helping out. And a Sephipod of my own coming in here. So this is about three minutes down from where we were looking, and from about two minutes down from me. And so we go two minutes up to where I am, and we see that I still have the Sephipods to deal with, and a Faropod, or Sephipod in the center. And a lot of my forces just exploring around the map, just to double check he has not done anything too tricky, because I'm really concerned about that. My dome is going to be able to deal a lot of damage to something here. Get get rid of this Faropod. So my dome has beamed out the Faropod. The Faropod is getting heavily damaged, and the dome has actually started to attack it primarily. But the dome will not be able to kill it in time, so it's still going to be able to do a lot of damage. If a Chrono Force in the past, it won't be able to live that long, because the dome is still going to be there. And it looks like Wolfrog has actually cancelled the Chrono Force, so... It won't end up doing much good at all. From his point of view, he managed to destroy the dome a lot sooner than I saw. He managed to micro away from that. So, he's about five seconds down from me, but it's an important five seconds. He's managed to take care of some of my defenses as he's been there. And actually, a fair amount of my attacking force hasn't been dealing a lot of damage. It looks like they're... Okay, now they're coming in. So I have some Seppies coming in, some Octopods coming in, and a lot of Grand Units coming in, a lot of Octos and Seppies coming in as well. But I don't have a whole lot of Faropods attacking with this group, so it's not going to be doing too much. And if we see, I'm actually now synced up with him. So we can see what I'm doing too. And slightly ahead, I have some Sepipods. I have no Faropods out there. I have some in my... Or, not in my base, actually, either. I'm mostly just focused on Octopods and Sepipods at this point. I wanted to make sure that I wanted to have defenses against his air units, because he was building a lot of Faropods and sending them back, and I have, as I mentioned before, a lot of Chronoports to the past, disrupting all of his forces. So my Faropods have dealt with the damage they can deal. And I'm also sending Octopods and Octos in just to double-check what I'm fighting against. Because I want to make sure that I'm not losing too much. But it looks like there's a lot of damage that's been taken that I haven't seen yet. So from Google Frog's point of view, he's actually taking care of a lot of my forces. While from my point of view, I'm going to be able to scout him out before that happens. So being slightly ahead means that I will be able to scout him out from my point of view, which is about five seconds ahead. See that he has a bunch of reefs, and think, oh crap, how am I going to get through this? But, I... Okay, interesting. It looks like his attack, actually... Something has actually managed to disrupt his attack enough to the point that he's not able to destroy my forces. I guess some chronoporting back actually did manage to help me out more than him. Because it looks like the time wave coming in has actually been reducing... Yeah, it's got rid of his entire attack, so this red time wave is completely limiting the big attack that he had on me. And once it comes up, we'll see what happened, because it looks like, from his point of view, he had me, or at least was getting rid of a lot of my attack force, but from what it would seem, this red time wave is actually propagating the changes that I expect to have happen. And changes that I expect to have happen in terms of damaging his base. So I'm going to be able to deal a lot more damage to his base than I originally thought. Just watching this replay. But it looks like... It looks like he's just double checking. And yeah, it seems that his forces didn't manage to get in quite as far as he thought they did. So it looks like... I must have lost a lot of money building those reefs. But then those reefs had propagated. So I don't know. He must be getting a lot of damage. He got a lot of damage from these forces anyway. So my attacks are actually dealing a lot more damage. It's about a minute up. Minute up from him, I have a huge force in his base, trying to take care of his reefs. Got one almost dead, another one's going to be heavily damaged soon. Google Frog's trying to figure out what he can do about this, because if those reefs go down, it has nothing to heal with, and really that was a big investment for him. I mean, that's a lot of his strategy with building these reefs. And he's about 30 seconds down from me, trying to double check what he can do, getting some more Octopods up, and getting some more... Well, not really getting some more of anything. He's just seeing this, trying to figure out how to defend against this, but he can't really do too much at this point. He's got a lot... He doesn't have a lot to defend with, and he's taking a lot of damage. Like I said before, these reefs 
I mean, it's not a huge investment. It's about, but it's still about 240 liquid crystal. That's a lot of money, and he doesn't. He's stockpiling a lot. Doesn't have a lot of chrono energy, so he's not able to do too much. He's jumping back just to double check what's going on. I suppose seeing what he has for defense is why it fell down when I attacked him. From my point of view, about three minutes up, we see that I've been still seeing a lot of damage. From my point of view, I've managed to get rid of two of the reefs, getting rid of a lot of the reefs processors, which are actually useless to him. Getting a lot of pods, and I'm probably going to be starting to get some legal class units soon. My triad here has been doing some stuff, but not a whole lot. Mainly, I've been just focusing on building what I can, but looks like there isn't really much that I need to do apart from what I already have. I have a Seppipod chronoported back just to double check to see if I can deal some extra damage, but it looks like it will be dying very quickly to these Seppies. So that was a bit of a mistake, but regardless, it will be still distracting to him. And at the same time, we're three minutes up from there, I'm going to be dealing, like I said, a lot of damage. Huge amount of damage to his horses. Google Frog is double checking. He's got his far paws built up. He does have some defenses building up. He's just double checking to make sure he can actually do that. While my attacks are hitting him once again. This is the attack we saw before. Dealing a fair amount of damage. And I'm just jumping back because I want to double check. Sending more, sending Octopods back as well to help out the Sepipod. Dealing a bit more damage, but the Sepipod is going to be destroyed by other Sepipods. The Octopods are being attacked on all sides, dealing a fair amount of damage, but really, as long as they can take care of this Octa, they should be fine, helping themselves out, while well, I have other forces coming in that were coming in already, chronally. So I have forces basically coming in from all times, got huge multi-point assault here because units from when that time was present, units from when that, from the relative future of that time, units, well, not really from the relative past because relative past would be just they lived long enough to get there, but I do have units coming from all sides, and here we are, here's my Seppi Lego. My Lego class units are being built, I have a Seppi Lego, just in case, to double check, get rid of any air units you may have, and actually Seppi Legos are pretty strong in general. As you see, they deal 53 damage for 5 seconds to ground, which is fairly high. It's not higher than, like, for reference savers down with the Octopod, which is a dedicated anti-ground unit, actually deals the same amount of damage at one tech level below, so they're going to be pretty effective on both ground and air. And at this, right now, I'm just trying to chronoport this thing back, make sure I can actually use it effectively when it was more necessary. Google Frog, two minutes or a minute down, is trying to defend against this with some Faropods, dealing actually a fair amount of damage to my Octos because the Faropods are, of course, anti-ground units, and the Octopods are trying to defend against them, but they aren't very good anti-air units. The Octos are coming in to try to deal some damage, taking care of these Octopods decently well. But the Octos are going to be killed very quickly. The Faropods are sound turning on the Octopod. The Octopod will not live very long. The far pods are going to be making sure it works a bit, but semi pods are coming in as well. They're getting distracted by these resource processors. The RPs are just taking a lot of their attention, and they're, the semi pod is not coming to kill the far pod to save the octopod. So my octopods will not be lasting very long at all. So from Google Fox's point of view, he's actually managed to take out a fair amount of my attack force. I haven't been able to get rid of this as best as I would like. However, I still have chronoported units coming in. That Sepi Lego that we saw before had been chronoported back or will have been chronoported back from the looks of it. I have more Farpods coming in later on, and I have a bunch of other units as well. So the Seppi, pod is, or Seppi Ligo is the big one, because the Seppi Ligo is an anti-air unit, a very high-tech anti-air unit, and it will be able to take care of the Farpods from Google Frog in no time at all. So those Farpods are going to be very quickly dispatched. And at the same time, or actually now three minutes down, just double-checking, and yes, now we have the Farpods. So Farpods have been chronoported back, and where is the Seppi Ligo? Because I did... I remember chronoporting back a Seppi Ligo, and I do not see it yet. Perhaps it hasn't been chronoported back yet, but we do have a Seppi Ligo that will be coming out a lot. And also a bunch of my other forces are coming in to help out a lot. So Google Frog is doing what he can to try to fend off this attack, but really, it's highly defensive. He has, from his point of view, he's defended a lot better than I have. But he hasn't managed to deal a whole lot of damage regardless. He's been... He hasn't managed to deal a whole lot of damage regardless, but he is still defending quite well from his point of view. However, I'm going to be about 10 seconds behind from him, and that's going to be doing a lot because my forces are actually, from my point of view, which is the more correct point of view now since it's further in the past, are going to be dealing a lot more damage than he thinks they are. The far pods have been eliminated, or at least have been not have been rendered moot, and my units are coming in dealing a lot of damage. I still have, I know, two Sippy Legos, which should be sent back fairly soon. And I have, as well, like I said, I have a huge force in his base. Taking care of, His reefs have still been alive. Actually, he managed to defend them pretty well. They were destroyed a couple iterations before, but now they're completely intact. So that's not a problem at all. But that's still going to be slowing me down, because that's a lot of healing going on. They're healing each other. They're healing the units that are defending. 
And that's going to be taking me a while to get through. Now, on the other hand, we have the Sepuligos here, which are going to be helping out later on. Well, they're going to be able to help from Puck's point of view. He sees that my attacks have actually been as effective as I've seen them be effective. The time move has come to update that for him. So we see that the attacks are actually quite effective, and he's not going to be able to do too much against it. He, The time wave has come to show that he's defended a bit better than he may have thought, but he's still taking a lot of damage. His far pods are still just being built, and the reefs are being destroyed very quickly. So this is not going well at all for Google Frog. He's basically run out of a lot of the forces he needed, and he does have a far pod still up here to harass me a bit, but I think, like I said, I think he got stuck, so that's rather unfortunate. However, like I said before, I had defenses, so it wouldn't have been a huge deal. His heavy, his heavy pods, far pods are coming in, Try to deal some extra damage. The Reef is also getting attacked very heavily, and so now he has two years to heal up, which is still quite a bit, honestly, but he doesn't have a whole lot to attack with compared to my forces. He's going to be dealing a lot of damage still with the Far Pods. Steppy Pods will help out, but the Far Pods are the big damage dealers. Steppy Pods are going to help out by taking care of these Far Pods that are coming in here, but the Steppy Pods are actually distracted by the ground units, which is really unfortunate. He has a couple of them chronoported back as well, but those chronoports probably won't help him too much. He's got all of them chronoport back, actually. You know what? That might help a fair bit, because he has Bunch of Chronoport back, back to when I originally attacked. However, we forgot to cloak his Pods, which is rather unfortunate, because that means that my Octopods and Seppies will be able to fend them off really easily, because I think I forgot Seppipods and Faros in this attack group. But I do have the Seppi Legos. Here we are. Now the Seppi Legos coming in from the future and dealing a lot of damage, taking care of these Rooster Processors in a hurry, and soon to take care of these Pods in a hurry as well. These Seppi Legos are very powerful units, as I mentioned before. I mean, very high-tech units for Grekim, so... Google Frog sees that I have these Sippy coming in, dealing him a lot of damage, just taking care of everything he has, and is not going to be going well for him, even with the Chronoport. Because he's been actually going from the Chronoport, and so he's jumped forward a couple sec or a couple minutes, or a minute, I should say. Jump forward a minute, and he sees that the attack is still going fairly well. From my point of view, about 15 seconds up from that, I still am fighting pretty well. I've hit a lot of stuff. I do have my Sepi Legos in the past. The Green Time Wave is carrying the Sepi Legos, so I don't know how that's going to work yet. I'm not planning to play off of that. I am now trying to get rid of this Faropod. And here we are. The domes are attacking, hitting one of them, and the other dome will be killing it very shortly. And here we are. His his defenses, so the Sepi Pod is dealing a lot more damage, although, like I said, the Green Time Wave is what's carrying it. That is the moment of truth. If we see what the Green Time Wave is doing, now we see the Sepi Legos. And the Sepi Legos are dealing a lot of damage. One of them is going to be taking care of this Faropod in a hurry. The other one is taking care of the Sepi Pods. Sepi Pod is destroyed, so the Sepi Pod will be dealing no damage at all. Far pot as well from the future, but it's taking a lot of damage. It's actually healing quite heavily, quite quickly from the reefs. But once the main attack force comes in to deal even more damage, these far pod will not last long at all. So the far pod is almost destroyed. The other far pod is going to be destroyed very quickly as well. And so at this point, we see that the far pod is not lasting well at all. So both far pods have been destroyed from the future. Too. So the far pods are destroyed. The resource processors are destroyed. Google Frog is trying to do what he can. From his point of view, he hasn't has that Chronoport that I mentioned before with the Faropods, but that is not going to go very well. We just saw that the Sepi Legos took care of them very quickly. So my forces, from his point of view, are dealing a fair amount of damage. From my point of view, are dealing much more damage. Getting rid of the Reefs Processors. The Reefs haven't been destroyed much. They've been really a thorn in my side. It's very difficult for me to get through that because there's a lot of healing going on. But it's still a lot of damage being dealt, so I do have very powerful units coming in, very high-tech units, and... I really should actually start building some Far Legos now, too. And the Sepi Legos, this is the Sepi Legos before they Chronoport coming in as well. So the Sepi Legos are just helping themselves out here, giving themselves a hand, and dealing a lot of damage. Even just the three Sepi Pods that I had from the future originally. Or Sepi Legos, I should say, from the future originally, before the new Sepi Legos came in. And I don't think I have any Far Legos right now. No, I don't have a Sepi Pod. There's no Sepi Pod in this triad, so I have no Far Legos at the moment. But I do have Sepi Legos, like I said, coming in. Lots of Sepi Legos dealing a huge amount of damage. So the reefs should be destroyed very quickly. This reef's gone. Another reef up here is almost going to be destroyed. The Sepi Legos, like I said, deal about as much damage to ground units as Octopods do. So, very powerful unit. It's, it's a very high-tech unit. It takes a lot to get it, but it's definitely worth it. So, the Sepi Legos is dealing a lot. The Sepi Pods are still taking care of these Rooster Processors. This is about, 15, about a minute down from where we were just looking. And Google Frog, about three minutes up. Is trying to figure out what he can do from here. He's building a lot of units. Let's see, he's probably going to try to chronoport back some of them, but I have. And my attacker was coming in on the green time wave. He's probably trying to just outrun the green time wave and do what he can with the chronoporting, but really he doesn't have a whole lot to do. His attacks. He has some octopods coming in, though, and might be able to at least defend a bit. Octopods and sepipods. And that is still pretty powerful. But I am getting rid of Spire in the future before he can do anything more with it. 
And further in the past, about a minute down, if we look at my attack, this is my attack as it continues. As we saw, my attack was dealing a lot of damage, now I actually managed to completely destroy everything. So, all Google Frog can do at this point is try to outrun the time wave, try to build some units, chronoport them back, and hope for the best with the ensuing paradox. But really, he doesn't have a whole lot to deal, to deal with any of this coming up. Once this green time wave comes, he's pretty much going to be done. And here we have another Seppi coming in. And this Seppi will be helping out. I mean, the Octopod is dealing primary damage. Seppi Pod is better against air units, but it's still not terribly bad against ground units, but it's much better against air. And from my point of view, about a minute down, I'm just trying to figure out what to do with Google Frog, because Google Frog is basically dead, and he just is trying to outrun, trying to figure out what he can do around it, but once the screen time wave hits his player line, he is not going to have any chance at all. Jumping back just to double check, make sure that everything worked out in my favor, and it looks like it probably did. So, there's nothing really hugely bad going on right now. I basically have a very comfortable position in the timeline, but Google Frog, on the other hand, has a very uncomfortable position, trying to take care of what he can, but these defenses will not last long. All he can really do is try to chronoport back, like I said, chronoport back, hope for the best of the ensuing paradox, but I really don't think... Ah, here we are. Actually, he has sent a chronoport back, but I'm not sure what he sent back. It looks like he just sent back a Seppi pod or something. He hasn't really sent back much, unfortunately, for him, and I don't know how well that's going to last. He's jumping back slightly, and we're going to see that he's actually chronoported back... What did he chronoport back? He chronoports back... A Seppi Pod. So he just chronoport back a Seppi Pod, and the Seppi Pod has been probably killed back if it even comes into my timeline. But regardless, his forces have not been really doing too much. It really, it's just a question of will that red time wave hit the chronoport departure before the green time wave hits the arrival... Or, sorry, red time wave hit the arrival before the green time wave hits the departure. And yes, it does. The Seppi Pod is coming back to help out. I don't know how much damage it's going to deal... That is, it's going to deal no damage at all. It's going to tap this far apart a little bit, but it's going to do nothing to it. So that's the pod has been completely destroyed, and the arrival is going to be cancelled very quickly. The departure should be cancelled very quickly, too. Yes, there we are. The green time wave, getting rid of the departure. So, Google Frog sees his entire base has been destroyed. He can't really do much with this now. He can maybe try to build up some stuff as it is, but he's getting legal class, but it's not going to do too much for him. He had probably gotten that before, but really at this point, he's just... This is letting the shock set in, because he's basically lost at this point. And just double-checking, you can't do anything else. And I seriously don't see how you can do anything else right now. From here, he's basically lost the entire game. And from my point of view, about 15 seconds up, I see that I have a very comfortable position. Just double-checking. I think I'm chronoporting back here as well a little bit. Just double-checking, though. I am in a comfortable position and taking care of everything he has. Just make sure to finish him off. And there we go. So... Yeah, he is just letting the shock set in and realizing, yep, he cannot win at this point. And so now he's going to be pretty much GGing. Because that's all he can do, really. So that was a fairly effective demonstration, I think, of the rush there. He was a bit annoyed by the Firepod thing, but really, like I said, I had a lot of defenses when that Firepod came in originally. It might have helped out a little bit, but I probably wouldn't have done too much, ultimately. While, at the same time, yeah, he really didn't have as much economy. So that's a good demonstration, I think, of how how a heavy economy build early on can really help out, can really do a lot of damage, and can take out a tech build very effectively, unless the tech build is also going for heavy rush. So I'm not sure exactly how to deal with this. I know there is a counter build for this rush, but Google Frog did not use it. And from my point of view, I'm basically taking care of everything he has. So for me, I have everything. I've won the game, I'm just waiting for him to GG and surrender, which he actually takes a little while for the shock to set in, so at this point, this is pretty much done, so for all of you out there who watch this just for the game, that's it, thank you, have a good night. For everyone else, this is, I'm just going to go through the map a bit, so good night to everyone who is not interested in the technical details of the map and the way the map will be set up in the future. So. This map has actually been updated a fair bit, and what I've done, essentially, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, I've set up these crates here are going actually down here, so that it's easier to transfer between the two. The crates here have been crushed together, so basically this is the center crate, and these crates are all just surrounding it in the sea, and this cube plasma has been switched over to the other side, so it's harder to get to right away. Instead of being 5 Q Plasma, this is mostly, this is split between 3 and 2, like, so LC, QP, LC, QP, LC. Same thing on here, so everything's symmetric, and the natural has been also changed up. This, this box has been removed. These boxes have been replaced with just two boxes going off to the side slightly. 
As for the actual structure, instead of having a ramp down here, there were some issues with pathfinding. I, I imagine you noticed if you were watching the replay that it's actually a bit slow, a bit choppy. Like This is actually taking twice as long as it should be. And that's because the pathfinding strength is way too high for the amount of units. So what I did is I actually took this ramp out and added another ramp in here and a small ramp back here just because pathfinding required it. So I added this ramp here in so that I could reduce the pathfinding by a factor of two. So now we should be able to have twice as many units before it starts stuttering. And this ramp is now just a wall. So basically I set everything up so that the ramps are a lot more effective for pathfinding strength but lower pathfinding strength and to avoid any problems because all of Stone Pass has been a problematic map for a long time with pathfinding. And uh, hopefully that will actually fix it. So anyway, now for all of you who actually do care for the map, that was everything to say. So thank you for watching everyone and have a good night.